Right, I think we will just get started. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, this is our event around the next generation, sourcing the next generation of talent. We have a couple of people on the call with us today. So Nicola Taylor, who runs our ePlacement Scotland programme, will discuss ePlacement Scotland and our digital upskilling courses that we at Scotland has have run previously. We also have Nicola Herndon, who is from West Highland College. Nicola will discuss foundation apprenticeships and hopefully um, her foundation apprentice student, Duncan, will be able to join us. He's in classes at the moment, but he's going to try and join us a bit later on. Um, and we have Colin Buchanan from SDS, who is going to share with us some information and insights on our graduate apprenticeship programme and their modern apprenticeship program um, and for those of you who don't know me apologies i am karen meekin i am interim ceo of scotland is and we are the trade body and cluster management organization for scotland's tech sector um, i clearly both nicola's and colin are the people with all the information so i will hand over to nicola taylor um, who heads up our e-placement scotland program nicola thank you karen Good morning, everybody. Bear with me whilst I start to share my screen here with you all. I'm hoping you can see my slides and, and hear me okay. There we go. Good morning. Thank you. So I'm hoping everybody can see that okay. Um, so as Karen mentioned there, my name is Nicola Taylor. I'm a project manager at Scotland Is, who is responsible for a number of of our skills initiative. Uh, one of those is our undergraduate placement programme, ePlacement Scotland. So firstly, I'm going to take you through a little bit of information around that. Um, so just going to cover off a little bit about our um, history. Um, then I'll move on to discuss our employer services. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the service we provide to students. Um, talk a little bit about how we engage with the universities and colleges across um, Scotland. Then I'll move on to discuss our kind of typical roles and what placements look like. Um, and then um, I will provide my contact information at the end. Um, after that, I'm then going to move on to speak about our digital upskilling modules, but I'll cover those off separately. So ePlacement Scotland, um, as I mentioned there, is our undergraduate placement programme. It was established in 2010 and is a fully funded project by the Scottish Funding Council. Um, it's a partnership project uh, between ourselves, Scotland Is, and Edinburgh Napier University. Um, basically, the project came around because our members had um, expressed that there was a significant skills gap within the, the tech sector, um, particularly around um, work ready graduates. Um, and as a result of that, ePlacement Scotland was born um, with a view to closing that gap and helping to produce work ready graduates into industry. So during our time, we've created almost 3000 paid placement opportunities. We engage with a variety of employers, um, particularly startups and SMEs, but we do do um, a large piece of work with the larger organisations as well. We have had over 7,000 students register since the project has started, um, and we've recently partnered with Census in order to allow us to look at more engineering focused opportunities as well. So what do we do for employers? Well, essentially, we can do as little or as much as you as you need us to do. Um, we have two offerings. One of those is an advert only offering, which tends to be used by a lot of the larger organisations who have, uh, you know, internal HR teams and things who, who would do a lot of the recruitment for them. So for the larger organisations, we tend just to be a kind of landing point that will direct you on to to apply to those organisations directly. Um, however, for SMEs and startups, we can be, you know, much more beneficial to you, and um, particularly for those organisations who, who wouldn't necessarily have a HR function. Um, so we can do anything from writing that initial job advert um, and job description for you. Um, we can also shortlist and do pre-screening things for you. We can arrange your interviews. Um, we can essentially do everything from start to finish right up to that interview point. Um, we've got an active database at present of over 1,500 students who are all actively looking for paid placement opportunities. And every time you register a paid placement with us, each of those students will receive an email alert, which will encourage them to come and apply for your placement opportunity. We're very active on social media um, and have a large following across Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, and again, all of the opportunities will be shared on there um, to encourage further applications from students. 
And um, something that we do that's a little different as well is we can provide a matching service. And um, so as soon as your opportunities come on board, we'll work away in the background matching the students who are registered onto our, on our system um, and encourage them to apply for the opportunities that best match their skill set. Um, employers also get um, access to the students directly themselves um, via our portal. Um, the really good thing about the, the paid placements is it gives you an opportunity to attract graduates before they're graduating. Um, we do tend to find that a lot of our paid placements will be kept on on a kind of part-time basis whilst the student goes back to study. Um, the important thing to note as well is that our service is entire, entirely free to you as an employer. Um, the only thing that we ask is that you pay the student at least national minimum wage in order to, to undertake the placement with them. So for students, we also offer a number of other things. So as well as, as having a number of paid placements for them to apply to, um, we want to make sure that any, everybody who's registered onto the system gets some kind of benefit out of doing that. So we have a very active blog, which covers things like CV and cover letter advice. We've also got interview guidance and things on there. Um, all students have access to an online profile, which again is another opportunity for them to sell themselves to employers because they get access to that too. Um, I obviously touched on the email alert system there, which all students can sign up to job alerts. So as new placements are coming on board, they can get um, alerted of that and be able to apply to the opportunities as they come in. Um, we also run a number of employability workshops for students, things like speed networking events um, and, and, th and tech talks and things that allow them access to, to directly to employers. Um, but we can also offer individual advice. So anybody who contacts us directly will take the time to sit down with them and you know make suggestions on their CVs and cover letters if they'd like us to do that. So we have contacts with all of the universities and colleges across Scotland, which means we're allowing you um, access to, to you know, a huge number of individuals um, and potential applicants for your roles. Um, we have a dedicated academic engagement team um, who go out into all of the universities and colleges to discuss the placement programme um, and generate more um, registrations, which again will encourage more people to apply for your roles. Um, I touched on there some of the things that we do, like employer presentations. So we'll invite employers in to do specific tech talks to, to, to specific universities or colleges as requested. And we do things like speed networking events, which allows six or seven employers to come in um, at one time to a college and get more intimate access to the students. Um, and like I said earlier, we have um, contacts into all of the universities and colleges across Scotland. So what does a typical placement look like? Um, well, again, we can be really, really flexible to the needs of your organisation. Um, initially, when the programme started, it was very much focused around computer science students for that kind of three month summer period or a 12 month sandwich opportunity. Um, however, over the years, um, we have seen a demand um, for placement opportunities such as software engineering, electronics engineering, digital marketing, data science, IT support, cybersecurity, graphic design. And I obviously touched on the fact that we've partnered now with Sense to look at more um, IoT opportunities um, and sensor opportunities as well. Um, we've also noticed a number um, of, of employers are now looking to take on part-time students um, so that the student can get that relevant work experience whilst they're studying um, and that's certainly something that we're happy to accommodate. Um, I'm now going to move on to discuss the digital upskilling modules that Scotland has have been running over the last 12 months. Um, so these have been really, really interesting opportunities. Um, there's obviously still a huge skill shortage within this tech sector. You know, 13,000 jobs go unfilled every year. Um, and that number is likely to rise as a result of the pandemic. So it's more important now than ever that we look at opportunities to, to digitally upskill people um, and, and address that skill shortage. So we, we continue to strive for new ways to be able to do that. Um, and as a result of funding that we've received from the Digital Start Fund, we've been able to offer digital upskilling modules. Now these are aimed at individuals who are currently in receipt of universal credit or are low income employed and facing two or more employment barriers. Um, and most recently, we've been able to run two separate courses. Um, one is a mix of level nine modules in cybersecurity, and the other is a mix of a level 11 modules in applied data science. These have all been delivered remotely over a 12 week period um, with a partnership from University of Highlands and Islands. Um, and all of the individuals who have undertaken these modules have all come from a previous STEM background. 
So I just want to talk a little bit firstly about the applied data science modules. Um, so these were up to two modules, um, 20 academic credits each. If you completed both, you got the 40 academic credits, um, but it's also been recognised as a CPD award. So if you've managed to complete both of them, you also get that recognised um, CPD award as well. So the two modules were Introduction to R and Data Visualisation, um, which is how to use open source statistical software R to visualise data, um, including cleaning, preparing and summarising the data sets and the second module offered was data analytics on the web and understanding of machine learning, one of the most exciting fields in computer science. And um, so a number of our students are now um, have now graduated from the course and are looking for um, interview opportunities. Um, I must have missed a slide, apologies. Um, the second set of modules that we ran is our cybersecurity course. Now these were offered at level nine. Again, um, up to a maximum of 40 credits. Um, and if you completed both of the modules, again, you received that CPD award. Um, so the two modules covered here were cybersecurity, modern cybersecurity issues and mitigation strategies, and network information and security, understanding how to critically evaluate and analyze the network and information security weaknesses of an organization. So as I mentioned there, our first group of graduates have now completed these courses and are keen to see what the employment opportunities are out there in the tech sector. Um, we're very excited to speak to anybody if you think that, that um, you might have opportunities for these individuals. Um, they all come from a really diverse background um, and all have transferable skills previously um, from either a, a previous STEM qualification or from work experience. Um, you can find more information on our graduates um, here via this link, um, which I'll share again at the end. Um, so thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. My name again is Nicola Taylor, Project Manager at Scotland Is. My contact details are on the slide there for you. Um, and I'm now going to pass you over to Nicola Herndon from West Highland College, who's going to chat to you about Foundation Apprenticeships. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm just going to um, try and share my slide screen. I'm hoping everyone can hear me okay. Okay, hopefully my slides are up. You have a thumbs up if you can see them. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Colin. Okay, so um, I thank you for the introduction and thank you for the opportunity um, to just shout out about what we do here at West Highland College. So I'm the second Nicola, Nicola Herndon, um, and I work, as I say, for the West Highland College, part of the UHI um, umbrella organisation. We have lots of colleges, as you can see, over covering the West Highland area. Now, I obviously, I think I have some sort of special thing on my, uh, on my um, uh, slideshow at the moment because it's going ahead of me. I uh, take the virtual school course links um, and the virtual school courses um, go into each school um, across the Highlands and Islands where the students are geared up with Chromebooks and, and all the technical stuff that they need in order to connect up with us on a live basis. Um, the courses we currently offer are obviously tech based. I do the computing science. So I take the foundation apprenticeship software development, the foundation apprenticeship creative digital design, NAT5 higher and advanced higher computer science, um, cyber and data MPAs. So quite a good spread there. Specifically, um, I'm looking at the foundation apprenticeships today, um, although they are available over a variety of frameworks. Um, I'm just going to be looking at the text based versions, which is a bit of a shame because I cannot seem to stop this slideshow from flicking on ahead of me. Um, as I say, a variety of frameworks, specifically today looking at the software design and development model, and um, although there is also the hardware model available out there. From a pupil perspective, and this is where I was hoping to have Duncan join us, and um, I don't think Duncan's on the call. Um, from the pupil perspective, the foundation apprenticeship, which can be taken over one or two years of the course, offers a connection with industry. Um, students come uh, to me usually having had a little bit of computing science, maybe at National 5, maybe not, and they really have no idea of the opportunities that might be out there. And so what the foundation apprenticeship does is give the students the opportunity to look at the industry options that are there. What type of careers could we look at in terms of you know, tech, tech sources going ahead? 
It also offers pupils, as I say, who are quite early in their educational stages, some sort of engagement, an idea or an opportunity to source um, and to get, kind of get a feel for the different, um, different types of computing science that there is because it's a generic term. And as I think Nicola referenced earlier, we've got cyber, we've got data, we've got software development, we've got all these different facets. And so the foundation apprenticeship really enables pupils to get a good view, a good round view of what's available. In addition, their tech skills are developed to what the employer needs, to what are currently needed, not necessarily to a curriculum, but certainly to a um, design that, that, that's offering the students the opportunity to work on real live um, projects, real live skills that are, are highly sought after. In addition, as I referenced, it's fun and creative. And it's fun and creative because although there is obviously a, a a, a series of things that need to be achieved because the, we are able to offer the students the opportunity to explore things that excite them we find and certainly the feedback that we get is that it's far more fun and creative than perhaps other comparable courses now if Duncan is here at the moment please shout out yeah, yeah. yeah here Duncan would you like to offer some feedback or, or your views on, from the pupil perspective please yeah yeah, so the course has given me like, lots of opportunities to experience the, what it would be like to be working in the area of tech and IT. And it's been especially useful as, a, as, a, as it's virtual, it's been, despite like, being in such a remote area, you can still get the experience, uh, which I wouldn't be accessible otherwise. And normally I wouldn't get until a few years down the line and also yeah it's creative in the fact that you just you can still get the work done and do it in your own sort of creative way independently and with the, with the um, work doing it as well so I think that's actually one thing I maybe skirted over is that um, every course that we offer is a virtual course so it's all of it's virtual and the reason for that and it's it is fundamental um is that we need to be able as there's my slide there we need to be able to reach everybody um and as duncan said duncan um is in school in malig um, there's no there's not really any technical um opportunity there for him um but you know to, to work to go into a place of employment so what we have got is we've got this opportunity for him to reach out to get into any employer where we're just so lucky that we've got a, a fantastic employer at the moment um but we can get into any employer any schools all across um our our, our high our highlands and islands remit um I'm going to jump, jump, jump back a little bit, just to go back onto the pupil perspective for a second. Um, Duncan, in terms of, Duncan's taken both um, like the higher and the foundation apprenticeship. What would you say is the most, the biggest benefit or the biggest difference between the two courses? So you're getting to... The, what's the biggest difference? Having taken, say, a standard higher and the foundation apprenticeship, what is the biggest difference um, or benefit do you see to either of the two courses? So you get into um, do your own sort of tasks and sort of be more creative with what you're doing instead of following a strict curriculum and also just the experience you get with working directly through a company. Yeah, okay. And I think that's something I really want to highlight with the Foundation Apprenticeship is the fact that it is that direct link. Although we're all remote, we're virtual, we're st still very much engaged with each other. Um, I, from the employer perspective, um, what they're looking to do is with the employers we've worked with, been fortunate enough to work with, is they've got this opportunity to source new talent. Now, Duncan is still in school and he's doing some fantastic work with our employer. Um, he's able to go in, the, the employer is able to go in and, and get access into schools, into, you know, your S5, S6, and, and seek out that talent early doors and really nurture it. 
not only that, the employer is able then to develop the talent that they need not the talent that needs to be needed to evidence a particular unit or anything like that, but the talent that they need to help their company grow and, and develop over the next um, couple of years. In addition, each employer has their own work ethic. Um, and so by having the student um, coming in at such an early stage, they're really able to embed a very specific work ethic into uh, the methodology that, that, that they want the, stu the student or potential future employee um, to, to develop. In addition, you saw earlier from our map that engagement within the wider community is massive. So the outreach by going in on this virtual basis, providing this type of um, employee employer network has meant that they, you know we're able to spread the word across a huge community which if you were going in on an individual basis would not necessarily be um, an option in addition the employees we engage with have got fantastic mentoring skills as a result of this so they're able to work with the student the employee is able to gain the experience of mentoring of you know seeing what is what is the young brain thinking about today um, and what's happening what's modern what's new and again being challenged because again Duncan will, Duncan will challenge the mentors the mentors will ch challenge Duncan and so it builds up this really diverse an interesting stimulating environment for everybody to learn, not just the student. And finally, obviously, it increases and promotes your brand and product awareness, which is always a good thing. Mentioning um, again, the virtual basis, it's easy. The students can come in, they don't have to travel for hundreds of miles to get to a placement. They don't have to drop all their other courses to get to this particular thing on a Friday. They're able just to go in, click on, join up, connect up. We're looking at students that are heading into the senior phase. So the next stage for them is going to be university, it's going to be employment, it's going to be an amalgamation of the two. So by, by having this, the, this type of course delivered in this way, it necessitates their ability to look after their own work to a certain degree. And that's developing key skills. That's developing the need, that, the attributes that you need in order to be a valuable, able, and responsible employee. Finally, it's really efficient. We are not looking for employers to hand over a whole day of some software developers team. Um, that's a software developer's time. What we're looking for is we're looking for, you know, 30 minutes, concise, helpful, um, precise um, explanations, scrums together, discussions together, which is not um, too hard for an employee to, to source. It's not like we're looking for hours in, in, in the day. So our particular way that we work is with Sitekit at the moment. Um, Sitekit have a real confidence in work, working virtually. And this was pre-pandemic. And I think what I would say is that, you know, for all those employers out there, we've all seen that we can work virtually. Not, not necessarily we wanted to because of the pandemic, but we have all learned to adapt to it. And I hope that's built out the confidence in, in that you know, taking this forward, you do know that a virtual working partnership is perfectly feasible and actually can be incredibly productive as well. As I'd mentioned before, the mentors are part of the team. You get that huge experience of working directly with students that you wouldn't necessarily need to do. And also it gives you development opportunities as well. So the employer and the college and the student all working together to create more development opportunities across the board. Now, my, the, the actual precise way that we work, our delivery method, is all based on agile methodology, which for those from a technical background, I'm sure will be more than familiar with. This is just a very high level um, type of agile. We're not going into really strict agile, um, agile principles. But in general, we have mentors, those mentors are assigned to a student or a collective of students. We have scrums. So that's every 
period that we need. If it's a week, it's a week. If it's a two week, two week period, we get together and we have our heads in together. What are we doing? What have we achieved? What are we going to achieve? Then in the intervening periods, I'm referring to it slightly incorrectly as a sprint, but that's just for the purposes of, of demonstrating how we work. So in, the, in between our scrums, the students, the apprentices go off and they do the work that's set. If they get stuck, if they have a block, then they've got Trello or other platforms that are available. And on Trello, you can ask questions, you can get information from your mentor. That's a remote um, virtual project planning platform, but it enables the mentors and the students to speak to each other um, without necessarily having to join up for this, this scrum meet. So if, if Duncan gets stuck, he can have a quick jump onto Trello, message his mentor, his mentor will get back to him and hopefully resolve the problem um, ahead of the next scrum. At all times, though, this is scaffolded. You know, obviously, as I've said, we're looking at, at, at school students here and that scaffolding is provided by by myself. Um, so I sit there and, and I make sure that the student understands what's needed, that the apprentice can work through what's achieved or what's to be achieved. And that if they do have any questions, that they aren't sitting there not sure of where to go. So it is all scaffolded. And I see that's where the, the college is really fundamental to that partnership with the employer in order to in order to be able to provide this type of program. And my feedback, as you can see here, they love it. Students absolutely love this program because it's creative, because they're not, you know, that they're not pinned down. Um, they have this opportunity to really um, stretch themselves, to have a look at what's out there, what's interesting, and to really get into the creative flow of, of designing stuff, of making things. Um, and likewise, um, the, the mentors really enjoy working with the students. It's a, it's a lovely symbiotic relationship. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. And if you would be interested in any way in offering a foundation apprenticeship, then please feel free to contact me. My details are there. And I think unless there are any questions, I'm going to stop sharing. Would, uh, does anyone have any questions or are we passing on? I think there will be an opportunity to ask questions again at the end. So if, if nobody can think of anything right now and something crops up, then there will be an opportunity to ask questions again at the end. So we can probably move on to Colin now, if you're ready to present Colin. I'll take myself off mute and, um, and I hope that Joanne and I are working as a tag team here. Um, um, thanks very much, Joanne, for sharing the screens and transitioning them. Um, I'm my name's Colin Buchanan. I'm from uh, Skills Development Scotland, and uh, um, I, I, my main role is to support foundation apprenticeships and graduate apprenticeships across the North area. And the North area covers uh, includes the like Nicholas uh, West Highland, Nicholas and Duncan's West Highland area, down towards Argyll, across to to Perth, and all the way up right the way up to Orkney and Shetland, with everything in between. Um, a kind of a cross-cutting role that I've also got is around um, supporting the IT sector um, and one of the main reasons for that is I have got some previous in, in IT. Um, I'm also familiar with the work that um, uh, West Highland College and SiteKit have been doing for quite some years. They've been involved, involved from the very, very start um, and so much so that when the pand pandemic broke and then lockdown ensued, um, Nicola was able to describe business as usual um, and that, that, that meant an awful lot because it meant that we could actually share the, the experiences of SiteKit and West Island College um, across the country um, so much so that not only are the, um, a, quite, a, quite a number of the, the models now changed to reflect that SiteKit model that, uh, that Nicola has described, it means that more companies have actually come to the table and said, well, actually, this is more realistic for us um, and, and I've, been, I've actually embraced the foundation apprenticeship model more. So although I'm not going to spend a lot of time on foundation apprenticeships, um, I'm going to talk about modern apprenticeships uh, and graduate apprenticeships. There are probably a few slides I'd like to just to go through um, quickly, Joanne. Um, if you move on to slide two, 
the drivers to work-based learning and, and it's really what skills development is all about work-based learning um uh, typically either either in employment or associated with an employer and not not that much different from what nicola and nicola have uh, have been speaking about this morning and um, the whole requirement really to involve employers in the pro in each of the processes utterly critical uh, so thanks joanne if you move on to the next one um we, we talk about the apprenticeship family um, at, at SCS, um, Foundation Apprenticeships, which has been well covered this morning um, in the area of IT software development, um, modern apprenticeships, which I want to speak about, and graduate apprenticeships, which also may well interest you this morning um, uh, as, I, as I'm speaking. So I will focus on, on, the, on the second two, but if we move briefly on to the next slide there, Joanne, please. Um, it, it almost like sums up what, what Nicola has been talking about, but I will share with you the, the other frameworks that are involved. Um, typically, it's SCQF level five, but we have introduced three at level four and five, which probably aren't of interest to, you, interest to yourselves in uh, hospitality, uh, construction and automotive. Um, but we have, brought, we have typically um, leveled foundation apprenticeships at level six, so that they are um, comparable and the equivalent of a higher uh, that was important from the early days and they uh, have retained that and, and typically when people are talking about foundation apprenticeships that are SCQF level six parity with the higher. Um, a, a range of providers involved, colleges, local authorities and so on. Um, and, uh, and as I said at the bottom there, we've got a pilot and three other frameworks, which I think really isn't necessarily uh, appropriate for this morning. Thanks, Joanne. Um, but it is important. I just take the slide up completely. Thank you. And um, it's important for you to know that that um, these are the uh, are the are the the ones in yellow are the ones that are directly related to yourselves. Um, in particular, I would have guessed hardware and system support and software development. Um, there's also creative and digital media, but there are others as well. As a, a, you, you as a company, as an organisation, may be thinking actually we could actually support someone in the business skills FA. Um, we could support someone in in, a, in, a, in financial services or accounting. So I just wanted to put them up anyway. But um, software development and hardware are the closest ones very much to yourselves. Um, a lot of them that, um, have been delivered remotely. Uh, the hardware using like Cisco software and that sort of thing that I don't know that much about really. Um, and software development more and more has been delivered using the model that, that uh, Nicola has described. Thanks, Joanne. Um, the, we, every every year we have a we have a, a review and evaluation of, of delivery, and I think this is important as well. The one thing that stands out, uh, maybe Duncan will come back in if he's, if he's not had to disappear to classes. Will maybe either endorse what I'm saying or not. But um, the one thing that has always stood out with the young people, what they like best and what really they value most, is the engagement with the employers. Um, they like the other parts, of, the other parts of it, and Nick Duncan talked about the flexibility and the um, the less rigorous approach is taken compared to the likes of your Nat Five and your hires, but also that employer and the real aspect of what's being they're being asked to do uh, with from the employer, the di direction and the support and the and the uh, everything associated with employer engagement is what they've always regarded as number one. And to number seven, slide number seven, please, Joanne. Modern apprenticeships, well, modern apprenticeships in a nutshell are um, modern apprentices are people in work. Um, so while foundation apprenticeships are for the young people who are still at school, modern apprenticeships are for those people in work. Now, I do know that your particular sector is probably less associated with modern apprenticeships than, than others. The, the standard, the traditional industry is probably still are associated with modern apprenticeships. But I have to say, more and more, it's looking like a really good option for people to consider, um, for a young person to consider, and for an employer to consider as well, to bring somebody in at apprenticeship level um, and to get them to conduct the work and to um, earning as you're learning, as, as the cliche uh, goes. Um, but it's a job where apprenticeship, apprentices work, earn and learn. Um, there's 80 types of them, but there's a suite of digital ones um, I think the, probably the biggest provider at the moment for modern apprenticeships is the is, is QA training, um, but there are others as well that that uh, that, um, uh, that that could uh, you could also consider if you're thinking in terms of a modern taking on a modern apprentice. Um, currently, twelve thousand employers involved. I haven't got the numbers for I, for IT and tech, 
but modern apprenticeship is one thing that I think really you should be, you, you could well consider to take a young person in at a particular level. I do know that as time has gone by, IT tech has been regarded as a job that requires a degree. Then, well, the arguments are out, the, the, the jury's out about whether that's true or not. I would have thought not in all cases. So that's modern apprenticeships. Uh, thanks, Joanne. Um, and again, the whole thing around there is flexible tailored training. Um, a, a lot of it is done remotely as well, as far as the learning is concerned. It involves portfolio building, as opposed to exams. So you undertake the work associated with it, with your work. You build up the, pro, the your portfolio, and it's assessed according to the the, the, the level of work that you're doing um, in the workplace. Um, as far as as far as um, Organisations are concerned, rather than maybe just taking somebody on as a, in, a, as a, in a job, take them on potentially as a modern apprentice, uh, improving the productivity, staff morale, quality of service and so on. And it retains the talent, reducing your recruitment costs at a later time. So it's seldom, it's seldom mentioned in the, in the tech area as one that, that young people could consider post-school. Modern apprenticeships maybe is one that you, you'd want to get people fast-tracked into your company rather than maybe the delay of waiting for them to complete a degree. Something for you to think about, please. Uh, thanks, Joanne. Um, probably really akin to um, what both, both Nicholas were, were speaking about is graduate apprenticeships. Graduate apprenticeships, again, uh, excuse me, are people who are in work um, and they they, they, they become graduate apprentices really via two routes. One of them is um, if they're currently in the company already, they're maybe undertaking a particular role in the company and there's an opportunity to reskill um, into a slightly different area. Like, for example, they may be working in accounts and they might want to move into IT or cyber, that kind of thing. That's the opportunity within the company for someone to take on a graduate apprentice. Um, within the company internally. The second way is to use it as a means of recruiting. So rather than asking someone to come in to undertake the job, they have got the chance to become a graduate apprenticeship apprentice. Now, in plain English, a graduate apprentice is undertaking a degree. So it's not something different. It's not something that's a bit like a degree or a bit like a modern apprentice. It's an under, they're undertaking a degree. And again, to jump back to our, our friends from the West Highlands, um, Nicola and Duncan, both during Scottish Apprenticeship Week, were on with them, the Deputy First Minister, describing what they do, along with the CEO of Sitekit and other people as well. And one of the young people on who I've got to know very well, a young fellow called Sean Wilkinson, who was a foundation apprentice a number of years ago with West Highland College and Sitekit, and is now completing year four of his honours degree with Robert Gordon's University. And I don't know if he's actually visited um, the, 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 the premises at all. I think he's done almost all of it virtually. Certainly in the last while he's done all of it virtually. Um, less of an emphasis on, the, on, on, on um, exams, in particular the Robert Gordon's model. Um, I work quite closely with Open University. Similarly, less of an emphasis on exams, although there still are some exams there. But again, that work-based learning um, uh, philosophy uh, is retained. Just to look at the bullet points here, majority of your time learning on the job, also a student at university or college, I've just mentioned Sean there, uh, designed around the needs of industry, they have been designed. Um, there are 12, uh, 13 different frameworks, which I'll share with you in a second or two, um, and there are four that are in the tech area. Um, available, sorry, 13 industry design frameworks, it's in front of my nose there. And 14 universities and one college are involved in graduate apprenticeships. So big success, very popular. And they are the two routes that an employer could consider either looking to reskill somebody inside the company or to take somebody on a real opportunity to recruit as a graduate apprentice. Thanks, Joanne. Um, as I mentioned, um, there are three apologies. I haven't, I, there are four. I said there was fours and there four, but I didn't, I didn't have color data science in yellow. So apologies for that. But there are four different, um, so there's quite an emphasis in tech compared to, con considering there are, there are 13 frameworks and four of them are in the area, area of IT tech. Um, graduate apprenticeships in the following, cybersecurity, data science, IT management for business, 
and IT software development. Um, and as far as I understand, the young chap that I mentioned there, Sean, has completed IT software development through Robert Gord's. Very, very popular. Um, UHI are involved in some, some delivery of, of, um, of graduate apprenticeships, but not any of the tech ones at the moment. But there's a suite of different employee, uh, sorry, um, universities that deliver it. So that's the subjects that, that, that they could be involved with. And again, I hope that whets the appetite a little bit there. I think I'm almost done, Joanne, but I think I maybe got one, one or two more slides beyond that. So, yeah. OK, so again, the, the, whole, the whole thing around, around benefits uh, is, is important. Um, employers, yeah, um, em, employ, employers should, would take on a graduate, 100% of those who have undertaken to take on an employ, uh, graduate apprentice would take another one on in the future. 87% um, improve the workforce sustainability, so that potentially is bringing in new people, as I mentioned, or potentially bringing uh, upskilling people or reskilling people probably from within. Fill the gaps, increase retention, in new thinking and ideas, that sort of thing. Um, and as I said there, the second bullet point, suitable for new and existing employees. Um, that's something that you may want to think about. You may have people that have come through the FA, um, and I mentioned Sean, that, that, that went from FA to GA, but you might have people that, are, that, that would be more suitable based on their job to do more than apprentice now, apprenticeship now, and then move on to graduate apprenticeship. That's over to yourselves. Um, so it's developed to retain and skill graduates who understand your business. And I think the whole around the productivity, morale, staff retention, it's great because people are actually, they're in work. Yes, there's a, there's a rigor associated with having to make sure the complete portfolios and, and assessments and, and everything that doesn't always fit exactly into what the, what the job is, but that's what graduate apprenticeships are all about. Um, I think I've got, I've got, one or two quick fire slides here, uh, Joanne, thanks. Um, a little bit around COVID-19 support um, associated with Skills Development Scotland. Um, apprenticeship employer grant, um, up to 5,000. Um, well, one will need to hurry, but um, up to 5,000 pounds for employers uh, taking on or upskilling um, an existing staff member um, uh, through a modern or graduate apprenticeship. So there's 5,000 pounds available there. The apprenticeship transition plan is for those people who have made, been made redundant. Um, adopt an apprentice as well. You know, there's, a, there's an opportunity there um, for people to, for employers, an incentive there um, for 5,000 pounds if they complete the training to help cover wage and recruitment costs. And back down to the lower level, but uh, within the area of IT software, there is something what we've called a, a, a pathway apprenticeship, which we've delivered. It's kind of akin to the foundation apprenticeship, but a bit cut down. Um, a small number of, of delivery partners have taken that on just to allow people the chance to, to whet their appetite in, in that area. Um, the last two, the last three slides are pretty quick. Joanne, still got some questions. I'm sure we'll maybe get a question or two at the end here. Nicola, I'm sure, will encourage it. Um, but there's something on the employer helpline there. If you want to get in touch, apprenticeship.scot is jam-packed full of further information around further F, uh, foundation, modern and graduate apprenticeships and other things as well. So please take a look. Um, I've kept the last slide up, although it's now out of date, but we did have Scottish Apprenticeship Week 2021. 2021. And the reason I left that one up there is because Nicola uh, I agree, and the rest of the team agreed that it would be a good idea to emphasise that although it's just finished, it's still, you know, Scottish Apprenticeship Week in many ways runs all year round. Um, so that's what that's about. And the last question before I pass back to yourself, Nicola, is um, uh, thank you. And any, so Joanne, just go into the last slide there, please. Thank you. Um, I didn't say thank you. Any questions? Thank any, any questions being handled by yourself, Nicola. So thank you. Thank you, Colin. That's uh, greatly appreciated. So thank you, Colin and Nicola. Um, I just wanted to stress before we move on to questions that Scotland is, as an organisation, have been a huge supporter of the Foundation of the Apprenticeship family. Um, we currently have two Foundation apprentices working for us just now, um, which we have, you know, 
really enjoyed having. Um, but from our perspective, it's allowed we operate in a very linear structure and it's allowed our kind of junior members of staff the opportunity to gain kind of vital management experience that they would never probably have got otherwise. Um, we've also had a member of staff complete a modern apprenticeship um, in, in digital marketing and they've now actually progressed onto a graduate apprenticeship as well. Um, so certainly as, a, as an organisation, you know, we're huge supporters of the apprenticeship family. Um, so now I'd just like to move on to, to allow an opportunity to ask questions. I see that there is one in the, the chat box um, there that I believe was directed at myself um, regarding ePlacement Scotland. Um, so that was asked by uh, Mary Devine. Um, so Mary, the program is, is, there isn't a program currently specifically for PGR students. However, students at that level are very much welcome to apply for any of the opportunities that are currently available on ePlacement Scotland. Um, I think particularly the part-time, excuse me, <coughs> particularly the part-time opportunities may well be of interest um, but that's something I'm certainly happy to pick up um, separately if you think there's um, you know potentially could be a demand there and the types of opportunities available don't currently fit what your students are looking for and um, you know happy to happy to pick up that conversation and see if there's a, a workaround in any way shape or form. Does anybody else have any questions you can take yourself off of unmute and shout out or you can pop a question in the chat box or raise your hand or for any of the options. No, no questions. Could I ask a question for to Duncan? Mm -hmm. um, if you're still there and that is uh, I, I know the geography very well as you know, I'm kind of from the same part of the world as yourself. Um, and I know that, that um, delivery is to a number of the schools. Do you communicate with the other young people that are maybe from different parts of the West Highlands while you're on the course? Yeah, um, probably not as much as we could, but we do on the um, scrum meetings, looking at All right. work and of learning from that as well right so you come to you come together during the scrums to um and and, and you're all together with the with the employer is that right and nicola yeah okay that's useful thank you yeah I mean, certainly the, the session has been recorded um, and the link will be made available to you again. We'll also email around all of the slides and things which will have my details, Nicola's details and Colin's details on there. So if there are any questions or any queries or anything that pop up um, over the course of the day, then certainly feel free to, to, to reach out. It'll be worth me two seconds. Looks like we have another question on chat. Uh, Innes, yes, certainly that's something that we can ha um, we can pick up with. So Inga, Innes has advised that he's seeking to employ a high volume of people in Inverness and Nairn and um, working closely already with SDS and High. Um, is this something that we can also assist with? And yes, Innes, that's, that's absolutely something we can assist with. I've popped my email address um, in the chat box there um, and I'll certainly um, reach out and pick up with you separately um, once, once this is finished. No problem at all. Does anybody else have any questions at all? Certainly nothing further in the chat box. Um, well, if nobody has any further questions, like I say, the, the recording will be made available um, later in the week and that will be sent around to everybody, as will the slides, which will have everybody's contact details on there. Um, I had put my email address in the chat box as well. So if anybody does have any questions or any queries that pop up over the course of the week, then please do feel free to, to reach out and get in touch. Um, obviously, Colin had mentioned apprenticeships.scot as well, which is full of really, really useful information. Um, but obviously, we're all happy to answer any questions or queries directly as well. Um, I just want to say thank you again to Nicola and Duncan um, and to Colin as well for providing all this really useful information and um, like I say Scotlanders are huge supporters of the apprenticeship family already um, and certainly would encourage anybody who is, is you know thinking about about taking one on um, to, to, to do so and um, certainly we found them all to be really really beneficial um, and certainly we'll be looking to do more with them in the future as well. Um, well like I say thank you very much everybody for coming along today and um, I'm going to end the in the chat just now and um, we'll get the, the recording and the slides out to you later in the week. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye.